Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I want to do now is making it last. It's time for another conversation. Welcome to Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. Now, we're going to be talking with Michelle E. Dickinson. She's an author, workplace mental health strategist, and also a TED speaker. Welcome, Michelle. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here, Noreen. So why should steps be taken to overcome pandemic depression? Because we're also going to be talking about anxiety a little bit later on. So we're going to just split it up. Why should steps be taken to overcome pandemic depression and before we even get into that why would we then label it as pandemic depression what's so different about it there are people suffering right now the reality is people are suffering you look at the impact the pandemic has had on people uh it's not normal as human beings to be quarantined to be withheld mm. connection it's not normal for us to have buried so many of our loved ones over a short amount of time for us to have witnessed so much tragedy in this pandemic. And so when you look at the data before the pandemic, it was said that one in five would experience a mental health challenge in their lifetime. And now what they're telling us is one in three are struggling with either anxiety or depression. And so it's extremely prevalent and we are not talking about it. And what that means is people are suffering in silence. That's true. That's true. So why then should the effort be made and for people to really take steps to overcome this depression, this pandemic so, depression? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I guess we have to look at where do we spend the most time? And most of us, it's at work, yes, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And many of us, what we've been doing, because we've all sort of been in the same boat with this pandemic, are diminishing how we're really doing. That's the first hmm. challenge. People are just saying, well, you know, I have, I have my job, I'm good. Compared to that situation over there, I'm really okay. But, but what they don't realize is that maybe they are struggling and maybe they could use some support before they hit a crisis, before they're formally diagnosed. So the first step is we have to start talking about how we're really doing. How are we really yes. doing? And yes. don't compare yourself to somebody next to you. Don't compare yourself. I say to my clients and to my, and to my um, people that I coach, I say all day long, listen, we're in the same ocean. We are in very different boats because we all have different past experiences, past traumas that have had the pandemic play out very uniquely for each of us. That's true. Do not compare yourself. Do yourself the biggest gift and start to just get present to how am I really doing? Is there an opportunity for me to start to look within and say, where's the joy that I had? Where's the passion that I had? You know, what can I do for myself to start to nurture myself and not ignore it or step over it? Before you move on to something else, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm saying, how many persons, though, will really take that time to really literally get in tune with what you're truly feeling? I remember a friend of mine was telling me recently because I was working through something and she said, you really need to stop and take the time to really feel. How many persons, though, given how our, our societies are structured, though, Michelle, yeah. yes, will really take that time. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's why I do the work I do. I really want people to stop and say to themselves, look in the mirror, ask themselves every single morning, how am I feeling today? Don't step over it. If you twisted your ankle, you wouldn't ignore it. You would go to a doctor. You would get support. You wouldn't struggle. So don't step over it. If we just can do ourselves the biggest gift by looking in the mirror and saying, how am I emotionally today? Don't label mentally ill, mentally well. Mm -hmm. Just how am I doing right now? Could I benefit from picking up the phone and talking to someone who I know loves me? Could I benefit from going, going outside and getting some fresh air and sunshine? What can I do to nurture me? But we will never do those things if we are not getting present to how we're doing. Yes. So my first piece of advice is slow down and look in the mirror. How are you really feeling? Hmm. 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 Okay, go on, go on. 
So when we think about workplaces, you know, we spend so much time at work, yes. you know, organizations have such an opportunity right now because people are trying to just hold it together, do the best they can, but they're struggling. And the organizations that I've had the privilege of working with are doing a little bit more to help them stay empowered and help them feel good and preserve their mental health. Right, we anticipate the mm -hmm. uh, fallout from the pandemic and the mental health um, challenges to start to bubble up now because we've gone through the worst of it. That's what the expectation is. But I'm here to say there are things people can be doing every single day that preserve their mental health so they don't have to hit a crisis. So I'm a big advocate of organizations getting their people together, doing programs, reminding them these are simple things you can apply every single day to feel good and to, you know, water the garden of your mind and make oh, sure God. that you're focusing on your gratitudes, make sure that you're focusing wherever our focus goes, it expands. So where are you focusing on? You focusing on the news, you focusing on the abundance in your life. So I try really hard to remind people there are little things we could do that can fill us up and have us feel good. So we don't have to hit that dark spot. I, I love what you said, water, you know, water the mind, because one of the things that I've stopped doing and maybe if, if, cause in my other life, I'm an educator. And if my students heard that, they'd probably wonder about me. Sometimes I don't watch the news in yeah. the evenings. Yeah. It's too much. God. I, I just really, after a long day at work and then to take all of that in, Heavy. And it's usually a lot of negativity. Yeah. There's going to be murders. There's going to be some sort of unrest within yeah. my own country, not then talking about what's happening globally. So sometimes I really just don't listen. I just don't want to hear about it because I know if it is something that will then in some way impact on me, I will hear about it otherwise. Of course. Of I, course. I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm more often than not these days, <laughs> When I see probably specific numbers coming up on my phone yeah. and I have an idea what that conversation is going to be about. So I'll see Michelle coming up and I don't want to talk to Michelle right now. I do not answer. Yeah. Good so, for you. Good for you. Because the one thing I'm also teaching is only we can be the gatekeepers of our mind. That's right. Right. And so just like what we put in our mouth to fuel our body, we get to say what we allow goes into our minds. Oh, to, definitely. To feed us, right? So we have to be the protector of that. So good on you for recognizing that doesn't feel good. We continue to have a lot of conversations about the pandemic, depression, anxiety. And we have to continue to have these conversations, but we have to take a break when we're having these conversations. We'll be right back after a word from our partners. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I wanna do now is making it last. Photography is an art. But more so, photography must come from the heart. Precious moments, priceless times. Take a pic and know it will turn out fine. BMC, BMC Photography, photography JA. JA, beautiful, beautiful moments, moments captured. captured. Let's go. For all your events, such as educational forums, workshops, book launches, weddings, and more, Contact Noreen Daly, the ultimate MC and event host. Visit NoreenDaly.com or follow her on Instagram at Noreen Daly Jam. Noreen Daly, creating long lasting memories. Lango Language Institute was created to meet your language and communication needs. All of our packages were created just for you. We are passionate about language and dedicated to your success. We offer the CSEC English program, the Study Body program, the Get Ahead with English program, and the Business Communication program. Contact us at 767 
285-285-0938 or email us at langdolanguage at gmail.com because the real question is how can we help you? Mothers and fathers Husbands and wives Sisters and brothers Friends for life won't live Making it last. Are you suffering from pandemic depression or anxiety? Continue listening to the conversation and you'll find some ways to overcome. Now, you said just now that organizations, and you've had the privilege of working with some organizations that have allowed you to do that. Now, there are a lot of persons listening and they will say, where I work, they would never, ever yeah. do that. Yeah. So it's a twofold question. How then can you, as an employee, yeah. try to make your employer aware that some of these things need to happen? That's part one. Then secondly, so it is not happening. What are some of the things I really need to be doing? Because sometimes people think that, yes, Michelle and Noreen, you're saying all of these things, but some of what you're saying probably will cost money that I don't have. Right. What are some of the things that we can say, you know, these are things that will not cost money, right. but these are things that you need to do to invest in yourself to right. overcome and before you even, you know, become yeah. more. Yeah, depressed. yeah. It, it's hard, you know, I find, it, you know, I've been doing this work for a few years now, Noreen, and I find that there are good intended organizations that want to do more. They offer mm -hmm. benefits, they offer employee assistance. They know it's in the best interest of their bottom line to take care of their people and do a little bit more. But when it comes to the, making a financial commitment to do more, they shy away and they oh. say, we've already done this and we've done this and they're yes. okay, but they yes. don't realize that yes. people are suffering. So what I found that has worked in, in some of the organizations is having these grassroots, um, emotional well-being, mental health, employee resource groups where people organically start to come together because they want to support one another. They okay. want to okay. talk about it. Some some people might be caring for a loved one at home and that weighs on them. Mm -hmm. Someone might be struggling with a little bit of anxiety that weighs on them, but they, they sort of organically create a little community or an ERG and the interest has that grow? Because listen, we're all affected in some way. If yes. we're, not, if we're yes. not feeling it, we are burdened yes. by someone we love who we yes. see struggle. So I say grassroots employee resource group is a great way to get their attention that there's a need to do a little bit more, right? And resilience training is one of the things I do. And so some types of you know resilience workshops are wonderful because we teach employees how to take care of themselves, but then we teach leaders how to lead from a place of empathy and compassion, yeah. what to say, what nice. not to say, and how to support. You know, leaders are only as good as, as they, you know, as they've experienced things. We're all trying to figure this out right now. So we can't <laughs> expect leaders to know exactly how to approach someone. That is true. Um, so then there's that piece. So, mm -hmm. so I, I say, you know, try to build your tribe, if you will, and sort of force the hand from a from a very organic grassroots perspective that's what i would do if i was if i was interested now what okay. people do on their own listen i teach resilience tips all day long i have about 20 teachers educators i'm teaching we have a crisis in the us where people are leaving the profession and our children are going to suffer so i'm grateful to be able to coach these teachers and i will tell you it's a few sessions and they're off running it's like a few sessions and they're off running. So some simple things, you don't necessarily need to invest in my coaching, but what you can do is start with the basics. What are you doing in terms of your diet? People don't realize that diet can mm, sabotage your brain health. If you're not feeding your body good nutrients, you can't expect to have energy. You can't expect to exercise. And we all know exercise is gonna give us that endorphin high and have us feeling good. Um, and sleep, are you getting enough sleep? Or, or are you on your phone until two in the morning? And are, are you running on fumes every day? Because when we're running on fumes, we can't deal with stress powerfully. Stress eats us up when we have not gotten enough rest and, and really shut down for the night. 
-hmm. So I would say those two things. Um, and then I mentioned before an attitude of gratitude. We are riddled with everything that's been removed from our lives from the very beginning of this pandemic. You can't, you can't, um, yes. not yes. available. Yes. All of these things. We're so focused on what's missing, shifting from lack to abundance. I have a, I have a beautiful roof over my head. I have a warm bed that I get to sleep in every night. I have love of people that I care about. If you start to shift your energy around, what is it that I do have? Things start to shift for you. And then the mind starts to look for other things that are blessings in your life. So move away from the lack, move away from that mm -hmm. and get yourself a really good gratitude practice every morning. Three things. What are you grateful for? Yes, yes. We've said a lot about depression. Let's just change now slightly sure. to anxiety, because for some people, they probably think that the terms are interchangeable and they're really not. So yeah. let's just what what then is a slight distinction between depression and anxiety. So we've spoken about pandemic depression. We're going to talk about pandemic anxiety. Yeah. What then for you is a slight distinction between depression and anxiety? I think when you think of depression, it's like hopelessness. It's, it's a, it's a low energy. It's, um, you know, looking at things you can't change. Anxiety is more of the fear of what is going to happen. Depression is more of like, you're living in the past. You can't change it. So you're paralyzed, but anxiety is like worrying about something that there's no amount of worry. That's going to change what happens but we've liked to think if I really think about this and worry about this, then I'm going to arrive at a better answer. Mm -hmm. And the reality isn't the case. So a lot of us have experienced anxiety just because, you know, got to wear a mask. Am I going to be safe? Oh my gosh. Am I going to transmit this to someone I love? So this like, you know, hesitancy, trepidation around just living our lives. And it's made people very anxious in general about, you know, trying to do things that they love. So um, I think people in general, you know, there's so many great things people can do to help themselves. There's, you know, tapping, for example, you can look up on YouTube, what it means to tap the meridian points, Okay. Um, be aware of what you do have control over in situations. Like you have control over, uh, if you're worried about getting, getting COVID or whatever, like you have full control over your immune system. You can boost your immune system through your diet. You can stay hydrated. You can exercise your body. You can get yourself healthy. You have full control over that. So just remembering where do I have control? Where don't I have control is also very, very important. So I'm listening and I'm saying, eh, you know, this is all, 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 all nice sounding, but I live in a household where I am the one that is the strong one. Yeah. So if it is Michelle or Noreen that I take time to do all of these things that you're recommended, it might impact on how I function. Right. What, what, what would be your, you know, advice for somebody who's thinking that to say, I really don't have the time or cannot find the time to okay. do this because it might just impact on how I function. And if I'm the one that everybody leans on, yeah. if I take the time, and, and, and feel what I need to feel, I might not be able to be leaned on. Yes, making sense? So cannot, what, what? Yeah, but you cannot pour from an empty bucket. It's the oxygen mask in the airplane. You cannot help those around you who are counting on you if you don't take care of yourself. And I try really hard to remind people, it doesn't take a lot of time to get a, a walk in outside to do a, a three minute reflection of gratitude, to do a little meditation or prayer. It doesn't take a lot of time, but that's filling your bucket. So you get to show up the best version of you for everybody who's counting on you. That's important. It is, it is, it is. As we're wrapping up, you've said a lot. You've spoken about pandemic depression, pandemic anxiety. What is the one idea if everything else just went over somebody's head? Yeah. You know, and really didn't connect with them or resonate with them. What's the one idea that you'd want to resonate with, with my listeners and, and those who will watch this in terms of why people should take steps to overcome pandemic depression and anxiety? You know, when we ignore something, it doesn't go away. When we ignore something, it doesn't go away. 
it can oftentimes become much bigger and uglier to deal with. So my invitation to your listeners is to start getting present to how you're doing so that you don't have to be in a place where it's harder to crawl out of that hole. Love that. Excellent note to end on. Thank you for sharing, Michelle. Welcome. This was Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. I'm Noreen Daly. Until next time. You, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life.